All right, how's it going guys? We are going to do a getting started video on how to just get started with creating your own game and your own league and what to do from there. So we're going to actually start a game and I'm actually going to continue this playthrough for a few years to give a couple tips and tricks on how to take a team that's on the borderline really of the playoffs and make them a good team. So we're going to go, and first things first, when you get here, if you have any previous games, you'll see continue and load game. But if you don't have anything, those will be grayed out, and you'll see new standard game. <clears throat> you have the options of doing a historical game and a custom game, which would be a fictional universe with no previous history. But for our purposes, we're just going to go with a new standard game, and we'll do, we'll name it whatever we want. Let's do new playthrough i don't know who we're gonna play as yet so it's walk through probably should have said walk through oh well so <clears throat> i'm thinking of doing a team that is borderline on the playoffs so not quite guaranteed a playoff berth but definitely a pretty good team that is close to the playoffs Something that's somewhat of a challenge for new beginners, but not too much of a challenge. So I'm thinking maybe a team like Miami, Baltimore. Baltimore would be a tough one, actually, because of that division. The Yankees would be pretty easy because of that budget and a lot of the expiring contracts. So maybe the first season they would miss out, but the second season would be pretty easy. There's a couple teams, when I when I actually look at everything, we'll see, but for now it's creating all the logos and images that you'll see in the game, and right now we can just talk about who we're going to play as. I'm really leaning towards Miami, though. I think that Miami is a good team that's on the verge and just needs a little bit extra help to really make it. And we're almost done. Should be looking at our team soon. All right, here we go. So let's just type in that. And you want to play as manager and GM. There's options to play as just a general manager or just a manager. I would not recommend playing as just a manager. That, that's somewhat of an advanced thing to do. You don't get to make any moves. You just get to decide the lineups and you yeah you can see here it says signing players trades the motions and drafts are all out of your control and handled by the general manager ai would not recommend that at all i would do both manager and gm that way you can set everything the way that you want it to be so let's not do an easy team like chicago or the nationals those are all easy teams let's do team that's close Houston would not be a bad pick they've got a lot of good players <clears throat> so does Detroit but Detroit's got a big market so it'd be a little too easy but I like Miami it's a tough division but they're still a decent team let's do Houston I'm leaning towards Houston so I'm just going to start the game. You can change your nationality, date of birth, everything. That was just a little pop-up that said that not everything is accurate as far as as far as far the salaries go. So first things first, we're going to go to game settings, and you can tweak this however you want it to be. You can play with scouts, or you can disable scouting. You can use this coaching system, or you can disable it. You can use owner goals or disable it. I'm actually going to disable that because... <clears throat> I don't think owner goals matters too much. I don't think it makes that much of a difference. We can we can actually go to front office owner and look at these goals. He wants to have a winning record, upgrade at first base, and extend Carlos Gomez, Gomez and then long-term reach the World Series. So in 2016, the version uh, out of the park 16, it wasn't very good with owner goals. I think that's when they introduced it, and it had some flaws 
where it didn't actually work as intended. So I'm going to actually leave it on just to see if they fixed it in this version. But as far as rating and scales go, right here, you're going to see 20 to 80 is probably the most common. It's what actual scouts use in the majors when they're grading someone. So we'll leave that on. For showing ratings over the max, players will actually play above their max potential for a short period of time. It could be a year, it could be three years, but you can show the ratings above max. We're actually just going to cut it off and then show potential less than actual. It's kind of similar, but we're just going to adjust it. So we can make the overall rating based on AI evaluation, not pure ratings. AI evaluation, not pure ratings, and I actually want to play with this. You don't have to, but I want to, and what we're going to do here is we're going to go to the AI settings now, and we're going to do ratings weight 0, we're going to do current stats 67, we're going to do 22, and then 11. Add it up to 100, 67 plus 22 is 89, plus 11 is 100, apply changes, recalc i like this i think that this makes for a realistic trading experience with the ai otherwise it can be very easy or just some odd trades would be made and i think that this is the best evaluation settings and this would not matter if you don't have this box checked here so that's something you don't have to change it's something that i do change though you can also change the scouting accuracy we're going to leave it to normal and players and face gen. I'm actually going to do no fictional pay, uh, pictures and I'm going to disable baseball cards because they take up a lot of time loading. And you can definitely change that if that's how you want to run your league. But for the purpose of this video, I'm going to keep all this off so I can simulate faster. And we're going to change frequencies of injuries to low. I think that the it takes... I think that OTP Classic with normal is way too much. I don't think it's a very good uh, representation of injuries. I think low is actually a really good one because players still get injured uh, fairly frequently. And it's not nearly as devastating as normal or high. So this is all personal preference, but these are things to look at. You can change all the under the hood aspects with the player development settings here. I leave everything normal and as is i think 17 redid a lot of the things here and the talent change randomness is actually much better now so you can go to league settings and you can actually reset all injuries and disabled list status but i'm not going to i'm going to leave everything as is as far as the rules go um 10-5 rule i'm going to get rid of veterans have right to veto trades and I've experienced in the past that no matter what, they're going to try to veto the trade, even if they're unhappy, which I don't think is realistic. If they ask for a trade and then they get traded, they can veto it. And I don't think that that's realistic, obviously. So I will do recently drafted players and injured players in more than seven days. I'm going to leave draft pick trading off, though I think that they do that now in in real life I'm not entirely sure about the draft pick trading but i think they do that now so i'm gonna block fictional players from reaching the majors because i don't want that happening obviously i pretty much gonna leave everything else the same disabling the right to refuse minor league assignments i'm gonna leave that enabled and i'm just gonna leave everything else normal but i'm gonna go to dynamic evolving league and turn that off because if I leave it on then there's expansion teams that could come there's team relocation they could change the schedule length the roster size all of this could happen and I don't like that I want to keep everything as it is team relocation wouldn't seem so bad some of it is just realistic like the Yankees aren't going to relocate Houston's not relocating Boston's not relocating so I, I don't really like it expansion would be cool but not really sure how they do that. Schedule length, I definitely don't want them touching. The DH rule, I, I don't I don't really think they should. Because 
if anything, it could really ruin your team because you could have your team set up for the DH and then they just immediately cut it out for like no reason. They'll just say that either it exists in both leagues or neither, and if they put it in both leagues, that would probably, you know, not bother me at all. But if I'm an AL team and I have my team set up with the DH and they cut it out one year with like minimal warning then it, it kind of ruins your team so we're going to leave everything else as is and that is everything so let's go ahead and take a look at our team so the team the, we're already at 10 and a half minutes in this video so i'm probably going to cut it around like 15 15 minutes is probably what I'll, I'll leave it at so let's just take a look at our team here we've got jose altuve who's easily one of the greatest young hitters of our generation carlos correa another great young player and the team kind of starts to fall off after that i mean george springer is a great player and colby rasmus is decent i don't really think he's all that great but these are not bad ratings so let's actually look at his contract. He's only got one year left, so that's good. Luis Valbu Valbuena, not a bad player either. And we have Carlos Gomez, who I'm pretty sure is... Yeah, I think he's been a disappointment since he's been to Houston. And that's... He's probably going to be much better in the game than he is in real life. And just looking here, we've got some pretty good young players, really. And Jason Castro, if I remembered, was a really good catcher. And now he looks like he's fallen off the past two years. But not bad to s <laughs> Did you see that person out? He pees excellence. I like that. I like that. He's a, he's a captain. Okay, so Evan Gaddis. He's probably going to be a DH whenever he comes back. He's a pretty good player. And Lance McCullers decent pitcher hey, he's a pretty good pitcher so the team seems to be pretty good and they're probably going to be a playoff team so long as we probably have to replace Feldman with anybody else but yeah it looks like a playoff team set to win for a lot for a, lo a long time but the division is tough. I mean, we've got we've got LA, who's who's LA. You know, they got a huge budget and they can just pay anybody. Texas is also a pretty good team, and Seattle is probably yeah. They're not a they're not a terrible team, but. I don't think that we'd have to worry about them. So I think our biggest competition is going to be L.A. and Texas. And they've got some pretty good teams, but we're also a pretty good team here. So I think this is a good starter team. Very young. So if this is your first time playing, this isn't like a surefire Chicago Cubs type domination team. And it's a pretty good team with a, in, a, in a decent division. So... Let's see how things play out. I do want to make sure. I want to check out the settings here for the ballpark settings. And you can see that our park is built for home runs. So that means that both when we're looking for players, we want players with lots of, that hit lots of home runs because that's the way that our park is set for. But triples is also huge. So if we have. We have gap hitters with speed. That's great. If we have gap hitters without speed, they're still going to hit some doubles. But triples is what we want. So if we've got gap hitters with speed, that definitely is a high priority. And because of this, we have to think about the flip side with pitching. We want pitchers with high movement. And that's probably the biggest thing we're going to look for is movement. Of course, we need them to not walk too many people because that would be a terrible thing for a starting pitcher to do free bases are awful but movement especially we really need to make sure that we've got good movement on our pitchers in all aspects not just the starting rotation but the the bullpen as well because stuff affects strikeouts 
Now, this is like direct correlation. Stuff affects strikeouts. Movement affects home runs. And control affects walks. So, if we have high movement, that lowers the amount of home runs that are being hit. And in our park, there are lots of home runs if you look at these modifiers. So, I'm not sure how it exactly works in the, like, mathematic mathematical sense but i do know that 1127 for the modifier is definitely higher than 1000 which would be the norm so it's definitely in favor of home run hitters so therefore we want home run hitters and we want people that stop home run hitters and that will give us a very good record at home which is the first step in building a good playoff team is winning at home so I think let's go to lineups here and we're going to cut this pretty soon but if we look at the batting ratings and look at the power we've got four guys with 60 or more power which is above average and we've got 55 there's four at 55 which is a little bit better than the normal and then they got the 50 with this which is pretty much average and then 45 and 45 but neither of these guys are starting so yeah the only person that's really not hitting home runs is Altuve and Altuve makes up for it with lots of doubles and hitting 313 or 340 so that is very good would they play good defense too that's something to definitely note is the defense that they play so Carlos Gomez being the amazing defensive center fielder that he is in this game not saying that he is that in real life, but he is very amazing in this game. Should be a recipe for success, especially with Carlos Correa being really great at shortstop as well. So something that I also want to show is that leader ability, work ethic, and greed. Let's, let's bring that up here. We have a lot of very high leadership and high leadership on this team and a lot of very high and high work ethic but low greed very low greed those are leaders so like you'll see here it says natural born leader that's because he has high leadership very low greed and very high work ethic i think any combination of high leadership low or very low greed and high or very high work ethic would equal a leader so you're going to want at least one or two of those guys. I believe that guys like Jason Castro would be considered leaders as well because it's normal. This guy too has good leadership skills, a good head on his shoulder, and puts, a long, puts in long hours. He gets along with any, everyone. I tend to make sure that my catcher, my backup catcher, is a leader or a captain. It helps a lot, and it keeps the chemistry in the clubhouse pretty under control because if you start losing a lot then things can get out of hand so let's check out our pitching staff and you can see a lot of very low leaders here and that's usually not a problem but when you pair it with high greed now you've got cancerous so salt of the earth <laughs> yeah, these are pretty funny so yeah i think that we should be fine for the most part but we do have some some guys that definitely might react poorly to losing which could then snowball the rest of the team into a terrible morale which would then affect our performance but i think we're going to be just fine because we're not going to be losing i'm pretty sure i think that we're gonna have to move this this lineup around a little bit because i'm not high on colby rasmus batting third <laughs> and i think maybe yeah i don't leave altuve a lead off and then Correa probably going to stay at second or second in the lineup. Maybe move someone like... I have no idea. But we're going to cut the video here because we're at 19 minutes. And we will pick it up on the, on the next video. We're going to talk about probably go to the draft and look at all these events here. If you hit the play button right there, you can go to the events and see all of the events that are coming up in the calendar year. And something to note is definitely the draft pool announcement because then you can look at the players that are in the draft, the actual draft, and then international free agency. Those are all important because one of those is the draft, which is, of course, important. It's the future of your franchise. And then the other one is international free agents. And you can get some pretty good players in international free agency, so don't ever skip out on that. 
and we will talk about that next time. We're also going to talk about changing the manager options, and we will get to that later. So thanks for watching, guys.